it is quite a story. Are you sitting comfortably? It happened about a week after the Japan job and my betrayal. Not quite. I was still an addict. After the Dopan deal went sour, I managed to score a little skooma on the road. I used it and sat up all night staring at the stars. I decided I would end my life the next day. After what I did to Felix and you, I thought it best for everybody if I just went away. You are very nice to say such things. I am glad too. I watched the sun come up then mid a noose. My camp was high near the edge of a cliff. I fastened the noose to an overhanging tree branch. I used the last of my skooma, placed the rope around my neck, and jumped off. I will tell you, don't be so impatient. A good story often needs to take its time. I remember falling, the twanging noise as the rope went taut, a brief moment of pain, a snapping noise, I thought it was my neck. Then I was falling again, the cliffs rushed past me, I thought, well, the rope didn't work, but the ground will do the trick. A wide ledge hurried up to meet me. I closed my eyes just before the impact. There was a smashing noise. Then I was underwater. I was suddenly underwater. What is so hard to understand? Try to pay attention. I had fallen through a thin layer of rock into a cave. I thought, well, the ground didn't kill me, but drowning should end my sorry life. The gods had other plans, though. A current dragged me to the surface, coughing and spluttering. That's when I heard them. I heard clucking. I was in a river being swept through a large cavern. It was dark, but I could make out many cages on the bank. Chickens strutted about outside the cages. I could smell magic. I gathered my strength and hauled myself out of the water. Yes, I know. It gets better. Hard to imagine, but true. Listen to this. Inside the cages, people were bound and gagged. Ignoring the chickens, I rushed over and tried to open the first cage I came to. It was locked tight. Suddenly, I felt a pain in my foot. A chicken was pecking at me. I kicked it away, but it came back with reinforcements. Listen, my friend, I know how it sounds, but it was not this skooma. Trust me. I was in a flapping, pecking nightmare. I tried to get back in the water, but before I had gone a few steps, I was knocked unconscious. No, a chicken pecks. It does not try to sneak up behind you and knock you out. I awoke tied to a chair. There was a foul-smelling man studying me. I could hear the river nearby, but now I was in a crypt of some sort. Chickens and rabbits watched me from behind the smelly man. He said he was going to make me useful. I did not like the sound of that. Have you been paying attention? I was bound to a chair. I wasn't going to be ripping anybody's head off until I got free. I unsheathed my claws and went to work on the ropes that held me to the chair. The man seemed to have a bit to say, so I let him talk. He said he was a powerful wizard and that he had learned how to transform people into animals. Once transformed, he said I would want nothing but to aid him. He said he had a spy network of chickens and rabbits all over Skyrim. Yes, that is what I thought. I asked why only chickens and rabbits. He replied that once I was a chicken, no one would ever take notice of me again.
A bear or a mammoth would be too conspicuous. Smaller animals make the best spies. I told him if he turned me into a chicken, I'd peck his eyes out. He told me that the change was not only physical. I would want to do his bidding, nothing else. He said he was using the information his spy network gathered to cause hate across the land. He fed on hate. It made him stronger. I had spied a wooden door in one wall that smelt rotten. As soon as I felt the rope around me give a little, I jumped at the door. It burst open as I hit it, and the chair broke apart. I was free. The wizard screamed in anger and loosed a spell in my direction. I dodged his attack and ran down a long stone tunnel. I heard the smelly wizard begin to laugh. There is only death that way, he yelled. Good, I replied. I've been seeking that all day. Yes, my friend, I'd rather be a dead indigo than an evil puppet chicken. I ran for what seemed like forever. Eventually, I came to a vast chamber with a spindly spiral staircase leading up in the center. The floor was littered with dried out bodies. They had been dead for hundreds of years, but as it turned out, they were still quite feisty. As I made for the staircase, the dead started to groan and move. I jumped over them and began to climb the steps. My father told me that anyone who dies in such a crypt may come back as a walking husk themselves. Not true death, something far worse. There were too many Draugr to fight, so I concentrated on climbing. Halfway up, I spotted an opening in the ceiling. The air was fresher up there. That is when I uncharacteristically tripped. I tumbled back down the stairs. Soon, the dead reached me. They clawed at me. They held me down. Dry, cracked fingers tore my face to ribbons, giving me these scars. I almost gave up, and then something amazing happened. Do these marks on my face look like a dream to you? No. I realized I wanted to live. I realized that my life was still worth something. I realized that I could be the person my brother knew again. This realization gave me a strength I never knew I had. I fought back, shouting, No! Again and again. No, you will not have my life. No, this is not where I die. No! I struggled to my feet, fighting all the while. I snapped necks. I broke arms. I gouged out eyes. Somehow, I made it back to the staircase. Yes, it was pretty amazing. If I had not spent all that morning almost dying, I wonder if I'd be here talking to you now. Anyway, I reached the top of the stairs, forced open the hatch above, and stepped out into daylight. I was only a few hundred feet from my camp. I stared at the tree with the snapped rope hanging from it for a long time. I knew I owed much, and swore that I would repay any debt I could. When I realized you had survived, I decided that if anyone was going to take my life, it should be you. You know the rest. That is how I got these scars. It is a good tale, yes? Yes, it is. Living it made me the man you see before you. Scars and all.